Today we're talking about pulse waves, but first check this out. This is what pulse width modulation looks like. Notice that the ratio of up to down is shifting, but something interesting is going on here because this is not pulse width modulation. This is a sawtooth and a ramp wave. This is pulse width modulation. With really careful parameter setting, these can be identical. So what's going on here? What are pulse waves? What is pulse width? And how is this happening? Let's figure it out. This is a pulse wave. So is this and this. Pulse waves are essentially binary waves. There's an up and a down, an on and an off, a one and a zero. The percentage of each wave that's in the on position is known as the pulse width or the duty cycle. So if you have a pulse wave at 100 hertz, each wave cycle is 10 milliseconds. If five of those milliseconds are in the on position, then you have a pulse width of 50%. This symmetrical pulse wave is known as a square wave, and it's the most common of the pulse family. Square waves contain every odd integer harmonic, so your first harmonic, your third harmonic, your fifth, seventh, and so on. As you vary the pulse width, you'll find all integer harmonics in different proportions. This means that using just pulse waves, you have access to a huge range of timbres, from hollow, robust square waves to brittle, reedy, narrow pulse waves. It's also possible to create pulse waves as a sum of ramp and saw waves. In this patch, I'm manually re-triggering the ramp wave, so the phase difference between the two waves shifts. Notice that each time the resulting sum is a pulse wave with a different duty cycle. So this is another way to conceptualize pulse waves, as the result of cancellation and reinforcement between two other waves. This might not seem that useful right now, but it'll make sense in a few minutes. For now, let's talk about some uses of pulse width. Let's start with a simplified version of pulse width modulation. Here we're using an envelope to sweep from one duty cycle to another. Remember that pulse waves are equivalent to identically tuned saw and ramp waves, with the phase difference determining the pulse width. So sweeping through duty cycles is equivalent to phase drift between these two theoretical waves. The phase can't drift if these two waves are in tune, so this implies detune. The faster the sweep, the quicker the drift, and therefore the greater the detune. So for envelope pulse width modulation, we'll hear brief detune at the transient and then reach a stable phase difference at our sustain level. During the release phase, we'll once again hear detune. It's worth noting that this detune is asymmetrical. So depending on directionality, you'll hear a pitch above or below your oscillator pitch. This means that in between the attack and decay phase, you'll hear the detune invert relative to your oscillator pitch. From there, it's not much of a leap to arrive at traditional triangle wave LFO pulse width modulation. During the ascent phase of our triangle, we'll hear detune in one direction. During the descent phase, we'll hear detune in the other direction. With greater LFO speeds, we'll hear greater detune. Interestingly, the LFO speed corresponds to detune in a very direct way. If the LFO speed is X hertz, we'll hear detune of X hertz fluctuating above and below our oscillator pitch. This is how I created the fake pulse width modulation effect from the beginning of the video. A square wave LFO modulated the ramp wave above and below the sawtooth wave. It's a pretty neat trick, but is it actually useful? The equivalence between saw, ramp, and pulse presents some pretty interesting possibilities. First, we can use pulse width modulation to essentially double our oscillator count. If you have a one oscillator SH-101, you can make it sound like two oscillators. If you have a four oscillator Pro-2, you can make it sound like eight. Secondly, this means that you can fake pulse width modulation on synths that don't have variable pulse width. Just use a saw wave and a ramp wave, or even two saw waves, and modulate the frequency of one using a square wave LFO. It's also possible to fake pulse width modulation using oscillator sync and a square wave, but this video is more about the saw ramp phenomenon, so I'll just put the instructions on the screen and you can pause it if you want to try that one at home. The third, and in my opinion most important, implication here is that pulse width modulation isn't a musically consistent technique. Remember when I said that your detune is equivalent to your LFO speed? That means it's fixed in hertz, not cents. As you move up the keyboard, your detune essentially fades into insignificance. As you move down the keyboard, you descend into detuned chaos.
but problems do have solutions, and this one's pretty easy to fix. Set your LFO speed to track the keyboard. Now with each octave increase, your LFO speed doubles, and your detune remains musically consistent. Congratulations, you just doubled your oscillator count. You can even find creative possibilities in this. Set your LFO to overtrack if you want shrill detuned highs, but tight tuning in the lows. Or use negative key tracking to add even more chaos to the low end. Every new technique is a new opportunity. If you like this episode, support me on Patreon for exclusive tutorials, bonus content, and one-on-one synth lessons. As always, I'm That Beat, and this has been Synth Fundamentals. Happy synthing.